The sheriffs have said that I am going to die this coming Friday. And I feel the weakness of my flesh which is troubled at this news. But my spirit rejoices greatly. For the love of God, pray for me and ask all good people to do likewise. She died as a martyr for the Catholic faith during the turmoil of the English Reformation. She endured multiple imprisonments, torture, and a brutal execution for the sake of her allegiance to the church. But the Pearl of York, St. Margaret Clitheroe, actually began her life as a Protestant. Margaret was born in 1556 to middle-class Protestant parents. Her father was a respected businessman and the sheriff of York. She was a radiant girl, by all accounts extremely beautiful, witty, and charming. Her beauty and vivacious personality made her desirable in marriage, and at the age of 16, she married John Clitheroe, a well-to-do butcher. Together, they had three children. When Margaret was just five years old, Queen Elizabeth I took the throne and banned Catholicism, instituting a state religion of Anglicanism. While her country, government, and people rejected the Catholic faith and actively condemned it, the fearless Margaret did the exact opposite. At the age of 18, she converted to the faith that those around her were actively persecuting. In the north of England, where Clitheroe lived, the persecution of Catholicism was particularly bad. One failing to attend the local Anglican service would be fined. If one actively practiced Catholicism, he could be sentenced to imprisonment or even death. Rather than being deterred by the intense persecution of Catholicism, St. Margaret was inspired. She was drawn to the faith by the heroic stories of priests and lay people who were willingly embracing suffering for the sake of their beliefs. Not only was she inspired to follow their example in faith, Margaret was willing to follow it, even unto her own suffering and death. The church is that wherein the true word of God is preached, which Christ left to his apostles, and to their successors ministering the seven sacraments, which the same church hath always observed, the doctors preached, and martyrs and confessors witnessed. This is the church I believe to be true. For merely abstaining from the local Anglican services, St. Margaret was fined regularly. But that was just the beginning of the legal actions against her. She was imprisoned several times for her faith, serving three separate terms in York Castle. She used her time in prison as a means of growth and grace. She learned to read while utilizing the harsh environment to embrace a semi-monastic regime of prayer and physical deprivation. These punishments were simply for her own private devotion to Catholicism. Upon her release in 1584, local authorities had not yet discovered Margaret's greatest offense. She was harboring Catholic priests. Despite her repeated punishments and the increasingly punitive legislation which made harboring clergy a capital felony, Margaret Clitheroe hid priests in priest holes she built in her own home, making it possible for them to illegally distribute the sacraments. On the 10th of March in 1586, the Clitheroe premises were searched, and the authorities discovered the priest's secret quarters and mass materials. St. Margaret was arrested and sentenced to death. She was asked to plead so that she could undergo a trial with the possibility of release. But St. Margaret, knowing that a trial would require her children's participation, and likely the revelation of the hiding places of priests, refused bravely. Moments before her death, as was the current practice, the authorities and accompanying ministers began a prayer. According to tradition, when asked to join them in prayer for the Queen, St. Margaret instead prayed aloud first for the Catholic Church, the Pope, and the Cardinals, then for all Christian princes. At this there was an interruption, but she continued. And especially for Elizabeth, Queen of England, that God turn her to the Catholic faith, and after this mortal life she may receive the blessed joy of heaven, for I wish as much good to Her Majesty's soul as to my own. She was stretched out on the ground with a sharp rock on her back and crushed under a door overladen with unbearable weights. Her bones were broken and she died within 15 minutes. Her children followed her example in faith with her daughter entering a convent and her son becoming a priest. St. Margaret Clitheroe, the Pearl of York, was beatified in 1929 by Pope Pius XI 
and canonized in 1970 by Pope Paul VI, along with other martyrs from England and Wales. This group is commonly called the 40 Martyrs of England and Wales. For I am fully resolved in all things touching my faith, which I ground upon Jesus Christ, and by him I steadfastly believe to be saved. And by God's assistance, I mean to live and die in the same faith.